Hi everybody, it's Richard here again and welcome to another video. Um, this time I'm going to rank the albums by Sparks. Now Sparks don't get off or don't get mentioned very often on the VC. Um, the only channel I can think of that talks about Sparks is the Canadian stub Muffin Larry Graves who's a huge fan of them and has done this ranking video himself um, about a year or so ago or maybe two years ago and so I thought I would have a go because they are one of my favourite groups um, they're on my bucket list I would love to see them live although I think time's running out because they are getting on a bit but they're still touring away their first album was released in 1971 and they had an album released last year uh, I think it was last year or the year before and it managed to get into the top 10. Now I believe they're recording a new album as well which would be great. So there's 24 albums I'm going to go through them all 24 down to number one um, there's going to be some CDs in this because I don't have everything on vinyl and I don't think everything actually was released on vinyl. I would nearly contemplated doing this all CDs but I thought now nah, we'll do a mixture of CDs and vinyl. So, first up, I'll move these CDs down here a bit. Number 24 from, I believe it's 1997, and that, this is uh, Plagiarism. And basically all this is, is Sparks re-recording many of their songs, making them sound a little bit more updated, and getting a few guests in to uh, collaborate on some of them. It's not a bad album, but it's pointless, really. And there's a couple of dreadful versions here. They bring in Faith No More for a couple of versions on This Town Ain't Big Enough for the Both of Us and Something for the Girl with Everything and Faith No More Destroy Him. I just don't like your guy's voice, whoever the heck he is. But this is just for complete sake. It's not a fantastic album at all. So that's my number 24. Number 23 from 1980 and this is uh, Terminal Jive. This is the second of their collaborations with Giorgio Moroder. Um, this had a number one hit in France on it called When I'm With You which is not a bad song. They were struggling for material because they actually put When I'm With You on twice. They put it on as an instrumental as well and that just shows that they didn't have the material. The rest of the songs are not great apart from one which is called Stereo which is excellent. But it's a bit of a disappointment this one. Um, so this is Terminal J from 1980. Number 22 and from the year 2000 we have the album Balls. Um, this is very dance orientated but it's not half bad. The title track is excellent as is More Than A Sex Machine and The Calm Before The Storm. But apart from that, it's it's not bad. It's not really my type of music, but you know, I don't dislike it. But it's down there, number twenty-two. Number twenty-one is an album from the eighties, which I absolutely detested when I bought it. I thought, oh no, 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 no. But it's actually quite good. It's very dated in sound, and this is music you can dance to. Um, this is the U.S. version, unfortunately, which has the the very minor hit single called Change which is a great song but I'm glad it's on it but they took off the very best song of this which was Armies of the Night which featured a different version which was on the film Fright Night but yeah it's, it's okay um, it's got a dreadful um, version of is it Fingerprints by uh, Stevie Wonder but Let's Get Funky is a fantastic song and this and music you can dance to is not bad and the song uh, Modesty Plays, which is a remake of a song we did a couple of years previous. It's okay, it's dated, it's 1986 and it sounds like 1986. So that's number 21. Number 20 was their 90s comeback album, um, Gratuitous Sax and Senseless of Violins. This has the two minor hit singles, um, uh, when do I get to sing my way and when I hear you I hear Charlie Parker talking um, or Charlie Parker singing actually sorry 
again it's quite dancey it's not bad but the, the best song on this in fact the, the is it the 30 second opener gratuitous sax is very similar to the opener of propaganda it's like a little um a cappella thing which is really really good um the ghost of liberace is very good but my favorite on this song is um frankly scarlet i don't give a damn fantastic song it's not a bad album this is a grower again i didn't like this at the start you'll find the sparks a lot of their song titles are hilarious and a lot of their uh, lyrics are very funny ron ron mail is really the the chief songwriter i think now they um credit everything to both ron and russell although russell did write some songs in his own right and got just uh, soul credits like Gone with the Wind and Pineapple, but we won't talk about that later on. But now I think they just credit the both of them. So um, this is Gratuitous Sax and Senseless Violins, and that's my number 20. Number 19 from 1983 is Sparks in Outer Space. What a cover. There's Ron absolutely plastered with pie. Again, this is quite 80s dated, but it's, it's not a bad album. All I Ever Think About Is Sex is a great song, but my favourite on this is a song called Rockin' Girls, where they actually uh, mention the song Hey Jude, which is actually quite funny. They had a minor hit in America with Cool Places, which was a duet with Jane Weedlin, if that's how you pronounce her name, the girl out of the Go-Go's. It's not a bad song. It's not brilliant, but yeah, it's just, this is like a summary type album. It's quite good, but it's still quite low down on my list. And number 18 is the album after it, and this was never released in the UK. This is uh, Pulling Rabbits Out of a Hat, and the highlights of this are the title track, Pretending to be Drunk, which is extremely catchy. And the uh, what's it with all my might? And there's a really it's quite a funny video on YouTube for with all my might. It's quite a slow song, but again, it's 80s production. They went full board with the 80s production, and I quite like it to be honest with you. I think these albums in the 80s often get slagged off. Yes, they're dated, but they're from the 80s, you know. And I think they're really, really good fun and another great cover. So. Not a bad album. This is um, Pulling Rabbits Out of a Hat, number 18. Number 17 is their collaboration with Franz Ferdinand, FFS. Um, Franz Ferdinand Sparks. And this came out a few years ago, and this charted. It's not bad. It's a bit of a, it's a bit too long though. There's 16 songs on this. And to be honest with you, I don't know why they bothered collaborating. There's no need to for them to collaborate. I'm not a big fan of Franz Ferdinand of one of their albums. It's okay, it's nothing great. So to me this is really like half a Sparks album. Uh, the highlights of this are Johnny Delusional, um, Call Girl, um, songs like Piss Off, excuse my language but that's the title of the song. Possibly meant to be funny but no, it's not great. But overall it's quite a good listen. I haven't listened to this for quite a while, that's why I've actually put it well quite low down at number 17. I maybe should stick this one back in the car and give it another shot, but yeah, FFS at number 17. Number 16, I'm going to give what they call their disco album, I call it their electronic album. This is from 1979, this is number one in heaven, and this is produced by Georgia Moroder. And this has Beat the Clock on it, uh, number one song in heaven and tryouts for the human race. It's not a bad album. Um, again, it's 1979. It sounds like 1979. There's only six songs on it. And yeah, it's La Dolce Vita is the other one, which was, I think, a hit in Europe. So it's not bad at all. Um, so this is number one in heaven at my number 16. Number 15 from 2008, we have Exotic Creatures in the Deep, and this is actually really good. And now we're getting into the really good albums now. And this has uh, Good Morning on it, which is a fantastic opener. It also has um, 
like not Morrissey which is actually quite funny and yes it is it's about Morrissey who is a big Sparks fan Strange Animals good song uh, Let the Monkey Drive yeah 2008 around this time they toured uh, in England and they did this was I think their 21st or 22nd album and they did 22 nights uh, where they performed each of their albums one, one album per night plus a few extra songs so they went through their whole discography I would love to have been at some of the shows in fact I would love to have been at all of the shows but even if I had a chance to pick and choose a few of the albums you know, it would have been great so this is Exotic Creatures of the Deep at number 15 number 14 is their most recent album and this is Hippopotamus um, yes this is actually quite good again the, well when I say quite good it's actually very good it's got 15 songs on it the highlights of this is the great song on aware mission um, missionary position and Edith Piaf set up better than me it's similar to exotic creatures in the deep they're not changing their musical styles now they've sort of got this uh, style that they're sticking to and it's working and it's just a very good sound sparks album okay at uh, number 13 from 1976 their last for the island label and this is big beat um, this was actually their first on CBS in America or is it Columbia the two companies are the same but I think it was probably Columbia uh, yeah this has got uh, a couple of songs off the film roller coaster which they're seen uh, performing one is uh, big boy and the other is filler up but the song off here confusion is excellent it really is a strong song uh, th uh throw her away great song as is everybody stupid uh it's, a, it's just a very strong album it doesn't vary much and it's quite heavy um it's probably one of their heaviest albums and there's very little variety in it but it's it's a, it's a really good listen and so that would be my number 13 number 12 and this is from 2009 and this is the Se seduction of Ingmar Bergman I used to think it was Ingrid Bergman but Ingmar Bergman was a Swedish film director and this is almost like a radio play and it's actually hard to get the CD and the vinyl is next to impossible to get to get as well very expensive you would think that um, this just has to be listened to as a whole but you can pick and choose tracks on this because it is very strong and some of the tracks the tracks stand up on their own right I really enjoy this uh, Larry Gray has put this very low down but I think it's much better than a lot of people think so this is number 12 the seduction of Ingmar Bergman number 11 from 2006 awful cover with the rabbits this is Hello Young Lovers, dreadful cover, but it's a very strong album. Uh, the singles off this were Perfume, which is video on YouTube, and Dick Around, which is also got a video on YouTube. Uh, Waterproof is another great song, and uh, Baby Baby Can I Invade Your Country is fantastic. Maybe a little bit too long, but brilliant, and this is my number 11. Number 10 from 1973. Uh, this is a woofer in Tweeter's clothing, and this features the fantastic opener Girl from Germany, which I knew before this uh, I got this album, and this is the one I really wanted. But the rest of the album does not sound at all like a Girl from Germany. In fact, it's actually very difficult to get into, but once you do get into it, it's excellent. Whippings and Apologies is one brilliant song uh, nothing is sacred is quite good Beaver o Lindy is just nuts and they actually do a version of Do Re Mi from I believe that's the sound of music isn't it but yeah this is their second album and um, before they had it big in America uh, over in Britain this is one like one of the American albums on the Bearsville label and I believe this was produced by Todd Rundgren I think now the first one was anyway I'm not too sure about this one but this is my number 10 a woofer a tweeter's clothing 
Number nine is their debut, and this is the reissue of their debut. Their debut came out as Half Nelson. They changed the band name to Sparks and re-released this. The single of this is Wonder Girl, and you can see a very old grainy video on YouTube of them doing this. Very, very good song. Um, Slow Boat is a beautiful, beautiful sort of ballad type song. My favourite on this is Saccharin and the War on side two. They actually have a song called No More Mr. Nice Guys. It's not the Alice Cooper one. These guys did this uh, first. They created a song with that title first. And things like Fala La Lee and Roger and High C are very, very accessible. It's a really good, strong debut album. And this is Sparks' first one. Number eight, I'm going to go with Introducing Sparks. Oops, put it that way around there. And this is from 1977, and this is their first and only album on CBS. And this is the one after Big Beat and the one before Number One in Heaven. Um, this, I think, is a really strong album, but it's more, um, how would I say, it's, it's more adult oriented rock, really. Uh, a big surprise is sounds like a bland single whenever you first hear it, but actually is really good. Occupation. The second song is hilarious. Over the Summer is a, a real ode to the Beach Boys and those mysteries, you just have to hear it to believe it. It's a fantastic song. So this is um, Introducing Sparks from 1977 and that's my number eight. Number seven is from 2002 and this is uh, Lil Beethoven. And this is a very critically acclaimed album but this is it's a very repetitive album all the lyrics are very repetitive for example the song my baby's taking me home the lyrics consist of him singing my baby's taking me home over and over and over and over again um there's it's really just piano and orchestration there's no guitars as such on this um it's a difficult listen at the start but again it's a grower the song Suburban Cowboy is brilliant and it's one of their best ever songs. The Rhythm Thief is a wonderful opener and How Do I Get to Carnegie Hall, again a fantastic song. So that's my number 7 from 2002 and that is Little Beethoven. Number 6 may be the surprise for Sparks fans but this gets slated and I absolutely love this album. This is Interior Design from 1988. And this has got my favourite, all time favourite Sparks song of the 1980s one called The Toughest Girl in Town, the open side two. It also has the fantastic Let's Make Love. So important was a single but it was a poor choice. Everything else is actually better as a single I think than So Important. And then it's got the infectious Madonna on this as well, which is a note to Madonna. So this is, and I love, I love that cover. I think it's so cool. Um, so that's 1988, and that's my uh, interior design, and that's my number six. Number five from 1982, <coughs> and that's Womp, Womp That Sucker. Another fantastic cover. Um, it's again, there's no hit single. Sparks didn't really have any hit singles in the 1980s, apart from cool places but funny face is a single as is tips for teens but again they're not the best two songs on this that's not Nastasia is oh it's it's repetitive but it's it's fantastic and you just it just gets under your skin it's that good Susie Safety is a, a, another great song as is Wacky Women and Upstairs Great sort of new wavy type album from 1982 and they were having a bit of success in America by this time but none whatsoever in the UK. Number four is the one just before it and that's Angst in My Pants. And this has got the absolutely brilliant Eaten by the Monster of Love on this as well as Sherlock Holmes, Sex Town USA, the title track, Moustache, uh, Mickey Mouse, Great album, again, new wavy. This and Want That Sucker really do sit together well as, you know, a pair. And this would be my number four. 
Uh, the next two sit together extremely well as a pair as well and this is both from 1974 and it's by number three Propaganda, two hit singles off this uh, Never Turn Your Back on Mother Earth and Something for the Girl with Everything but this has got the spark sound that I knew of the 70s it's, um, and it's got that Ron a male look by the piano staring at you like Hitler and so forth and scaring the life out of you. I was only eight years old when I saw this and he was pretty creepy. But Propaganda, At Home, At Work, At Play, Thanks But No Thanks, all fantastic songs, uh, Reinforcements, BC, At You, great album. And the one before it which was even more, slightly better, uh, but this was their biggest hit album. This is Kimono My House. This town ain't big enough for the both of us and uh, Amateur R were the two big hit singles, Falling in Love Again, brilliant, F Falling in Love With Myself Again is brilliant, sorry, as is uh, Hasta Mañana Monsieur, and if you don't like the opening riff to th uh, Thank God It's Not Christmas, not Thank God It Is Christmas, Thank God It's Not Christmas, I, I don't understand, it's an absolutely brilliant opening riff in my family as well. This was the album that got me into Sparks. I bought this in a indoor market in 1986 and loved it and I've just sought out all their albums ever since and this is my number two. And my number one album, my favourite Sparks album, I've mentioned this before, from 1975, produced by Tony Visconti, this is Indiscreet. This has got so many different uh, styles of music. It's got like swing from the 1930s, uh, it's got punk, it's got futuristic, it's got almost a little bit of metal in it as well. Um, highlights are Hospitality on Parade at, eight, at eight, 1918 in the future. The two singles, Looks, Looks, Looks and Get in the Swing. Uh, Pineapple again, the, the uh, Russell Miles song and um, How Are You Getting Home. Wonderful, wonderful album. This is their version of the White Album but only in a single disc format. So this has been number one Sparks album. So there you go, that's my ranking of the Sparks albums. Um, I hope you enjoyed that. And this one did go on a little bit too long, so we're 22 minutes. So um, I hope to have another video quite soon. Okay now, thanks. Bye for now. Bye.